Life is a story. People think dreams are stories. They seem like stories, but they're not. Misguided, no shape, no form, no reason. Like rummaging through unmarked boxes in a long forgotten storage shed. You'll think it was a story, but try telling a friend of yours what happened in your dream the next day. Only then will you finally realize, wait a minute, that wasn't a story at all. But not all my dreams were like this. Some of them really were stories. Some of them were like this. Mom takes me to an amusement park. It's deserted, dusty, lifeless. Even the Barkers pitching unwinnable games for Cupid doll prizes do so with all the joie de vivre of a cancer patient. But I'm ecstatic. No crowds means no lines. And there it is, the snow-capped summit in the topography of juvenile taste. The wonderful haunted house ride. Its facade promised more than paper mache monsters wrapped in derelict resistant chicken wire. Mom, we gotta go. We gotta go on the haunted house ride. Are you sure? It says right on the marquee is the scariest one in the world. Of course, I'm sure. We have to, have to, have to. Are you sure you want to go? The sign ain't lying. I'm ready. Are you sure you're ready? And the car lurched forward clumsily and crashed through the doors, which snapped back. into the darkness. Into the darkness. Whisking along through the darkness. And crash out the other side. No pneumatic hiss pop-ups, no shrill startle bells, nothing. Not even the faintest attempt. A con game. What a rip-off. We should get our money back. Mom, we got ripped off by the idiots who live here. You're not going to do anything about this? Mom, we should get our money back. She turned to me very slowly and said, What makes you think the ride's over? What makes you think it's ever going to end? That was the first of these experiences I had. I'm still reluctant to call them dreams. I had that one when I was four. Let me show you the one I had last night. I can't sleep. It's this house. I hate this house. It won't let me sleep. Oh my God, I am asleep. And dreaming about being right here in my bedroom trying to fall asleep. 
I had to open my eyes, but I couldn't. I could only open the little dream eyes inside my head because I felt the fear. I felt the dread pending, closing all around me. Only one kind of dream tries to hide itself. The doors open. He's already here. You can't run in a nightmare. Not with atrophied muscles over tungsten bones, not through the gelatinous atmosphere. Not from him. I watched my hand draw a row of faces on my white board. And despite the childish artwork, I could instantly recognize each. Family. Friends. I left the room. Then blackness. The next time my senses returned to me, I was not before my whiteboard. I was in a basement, standing before a mirror, surrounded by the mise-en-scene of nightmares. I was in his world now, not my own. And I can't wake up. I can't wake up. Oh my God, I am awake. Awake in the very location where my nightmare ended. This was real. How much nightmare would prove to be real? Did I sleepwalk here? How could I have pulled so sadistic a trick on myself? Especially as I didn't know where here was. I know this place. This is my home. I was just in a room that doesn't exist in my own house. First relief, then a sobering realization. As I'd fallen asleep where my dream began and woke up where it ended, I could never know for sure what was a dream and what wasn't. Here I am now, in a much warmer place, in a much brighter place, enjoying a picnic with my brother and his girlfriend. You're gonna have to get used to the way I speak out loud. My inner voice is considerably more sophisticated. John, this chicken was good, but we didn't bring any ice cream. Well, I'm sorry to bring ice cream on a picnic, Dennis, but, uh, well, we have cupcakes. No, I don't want cupcakes. All I want is ice cream. We have ice cream at home. Well, I like the kind at the store. <laughs> we have that kind at home. No, well, it's better at the store. It's exactly the same. <laughs> you just want to see that girl. What is her name? Susan, I think. Mm. Yeah, she's cute. I think someone has a crush. <laughs> no way. All I want is ice cream. I don't know any girl. <laughs> what girl? 
Okay. Hi. Hi. Nice to see you. Of course it's nice to see me. I'm outlandishly hot. Chocolate chip cookie dough? You know my flavor. Of course I do. You're my favorite customer. Mm. <laughs> I got you. You ready for this? <laughs> you ready, Dennis? <laughs> Surprise, Dennis. Mirror. I think it'll look good on the wall there between the windows. Yeah. Well, where am I supposed to put my habit trails? Where do you put all my stuff? Where's all of it going? Well, it's mostly still in here, Dennis. No, no, that smelly old box is where my robots used to be. And that scary statue is where I kept my comics. Well, I had to put one or two things down in the storage room, Dennis. Do you want to move my habit trail into the storage room? Well, Dennis. Anyway, I don't like this mirror, and I don't want it in this room. Dennis, look at the shape of this frame. Compared to the shape of the window, it's the same kind of wood stained with the same kind of stain. It matches the character of the house perfectly. It even matches the motif of the furniture that you and I chose ourselves. Use all the big words you want. You know I won't be able to argue with all of your big words. I've seen this mirror before. Well, I, I doubt that. No, I have seen it. It's unlikely, it. Dennis. It wasn't just locked up in a vault. If you surprised us all and proved yourself a safe cracker, you still wouldn't have found it. I know that. Well, there's a vault within a vault. Did you know that? A prohibition vault. A place where back in the day of prohibition, when booze was illegal, people used to hide their booze. I don't think anyone's been in that room since the original owners, because what I found in that room is worth enough to pay this mortgage for a year. Oh, I've been down in there, and I saw this stuff. I saw really? the mirror, really? and really? I hated really? it Dennis, even Dennis, then. When was right this? When, I saw when was this? Last night. The mirror wasn't even in the house last night. It was in town getting restored for you. No, it's not for me. You just want to get rid Dennis. of my hamsters. Dennis, your hamsters really smell bad. Now, the mirror really looks good. And put the mirror in your room. Just one. This is one week. That's all I'm asking. Just, just see if the mirror grows on you. No, it's not going to grow on me. Because I don't like anything you okay. put in here. Dennis. This isn't my room anymore. It's your room. But this is the worst thing, because the chair, I just don't like it. But the mirror, I hate. And I'm going to break the mirror right now. Hey, hey, John. Dennis, calm down. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dennis. I'm sorry. All right, Dennis, just look, you know, a couple of days. Just a couple of days, it's not too much to ask, all right? And you, you can keep your hamsters. A couple of days, you're gonna love the mirror. <laughs> you're gonna love that mirror. You can't tell me what I like or don't like. <laughs> with the right wood, with the, the right day with the right motif using all these big words thinking he knows everything <laughs> knowing big words doesn't make him right <laughs> knowing big words doesn't even make him smart just makes him know big words no matter how many long 50 cent words he uses, he can't tell me to like you. I like you. I like you a lot. We both know where the stress is coming from. Let's just put him in a hospital. That's why I want to redecorate his bedroom. So we can sell the place and I can put them in a hospital. We could sell this place tomorrow unfurnished. This is a summer town. 
People that buy here, they want a summer retreat. They want it finished, furnished. Yes, and I would agree with you if we had unlimited time, but you're a time bomb, sweetie. We could put Dennis in. I'm not putting Dennis in a state hospital. This train hit my dog right in the ass. Wrecked him, said the teacher. Wrecked him. So I said, wrecked him. It fucking killed him. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, you're too kind. <laughs> I tell nice, simple jokes. I use no big words. Oh, uh, thank you. Hey, stop throwing your panties on the stage. It's really disruptive. Destruct. Disturbs my concent. See? <laughs> no big words. Thank you. You tell jokes everyone can understand. John's jokes only make sense to John. You don't get his jokes, but everyone else does. Why? Because they're about you. In his mind, everything that makes him sad or angry, your fault. How did you get past my gate? Oh, please excuse my breach. My name is Mildy Torres. I work with social services. And? And we got a tip on our hotline that you've been losing your temper around Dennis. But when we saw Dennis yesterday, he seemed fine. No marks, no bruises. Who said I was losing my temper? Aren't you going to invite me in? Yeah. Please. We just want to make sure that you're the right person to take care of Dennis, because frankly, it's a responsibility some people shouldn't be trusted with. I can handle it. Are you sure? Because taking care of a mentally challenged person can be a real handful sometimes. Wouldn't it be a load off if the state could take care of Dennis? There's an opening in Green Valley. Well, that would be fantastic. No, it wouldn't be. Please excuse us, Lydia. Thank you. I don't want Dennis in Green Valley. Don't you want a break? I mean, it all adds up. Taking care of a mentally challenged person, it just wears on you and wears on you. Changes your personality. Do you know where it would show up first? Where? Well, why don't you take a guess? I could give I you... I asked you where, Mildy. Your patience. You would become very impatient. Do you know where it would show up second? I don't have time for these games. Your temper. Your temper would go next. And a short-tempered man is not fit to be custodian of a mentally challenged uh, one. Is this some sort of experiment? You want a reaction. You keep asking me if I have a temper, you're going to find one. Well, you're not dumb. I'll give you that. Your lab is contaminated and your experiment completely prejudiced. I am angry. How can the state split up my family? I'm not a criminal. You don't have to be one. Social services can remove a child from a suspect parent on the strength of one anonymous phone call. Okay. okay, so let me get this straight. I can make a phone call about anyone at random without giving my name, and a person like you will show up at their door and remove their children? That's right. And that's legal? Well, a lot of people thought it was a necessary law that was a long time in coming. We call those people idiots, Mildy. Temper, temper. You know, uh, this has been amazing, Mildy. We must do this again sometime. Oh, we will. We will. Dr. Preston, John Peterson, I need to come and see you. No, not next week. Now, man. Right now. This bitch, Mildy Torres from Social Services, Shows up at my front door, finagles her way in, and tells me I'm under investigation, that I might lose Dennis. Why are you under investigation? She said someone complained that I've been losing my temper. Violently. Now, she doesn't think Dennis is safe with me. 
You're very tense, John. Yeah, but that's normal, right? In the situation I'm in justifies my tension. No, it legitimizes it. It does not justify it. The last time we spoke, all you could talk about was moving away from Dennis, finding a care facility for him. Yeah, and I still want that. Well, then why didn't you give Dennis the choice of going to social services? Because you would have sent him to Green Valley. Have you seen the fucking place? I volunteer there twice oh. a week. OK, well, it's fine. It's just not right for Dennis. You want a private hospital? I bet. How soon? Oh, Christ, Doc. I don't even have a life anymore. All I do, I, I, I care for Dennis 24-7. If he's not in the car, I don't even know what station to put it on. I just scan and I scan. I don't even know my own taste in music. You have got to get out of there. Losing your identity. That's a pretty, pretty serious sign, John. He's my responsibility. I can't dump him in someone else's lap. I owe him. No one else can pay my debt. Debt? What do you owe him? And Susan is handing me ice cream. And she's dropped a little and is slipping in it. Looks like she's going to crack her skull. Oh, but luckily there's a pillow on the floor or a pillowcase full of broken glass. But I rush in, and I catch her, and throw her on the glass. Stop. This is ruining the drawing. John. No. I don't even like that tone. We're not going to fight, are we? No, you're not going to itemize the way in which I disappoint you. Not today. Yes, I am. What do I think John and Lydia are doing? They're discussing big ideas with big 50 cent words in them. You can see how overwrought I am. I don't have time the day to fucking breathe. And yet you do nothing about your overwhelming lifestyle. If it were as difficult as you claim, then you would have done something about it by now, but you haven't. So it seems to me that you like the situation you're in. It makes you seem selfless. It gives you room to operate. Operate? Well, no one would ever question or even suspect a tireless martyr. Suspect me of what? You're never going to marry me, John, are you? You've got the perfect excuse to stay single and not look like a cat. You've got Dennis. They're right on the edge of having another huge argument, as always. Why did they even stay together? They both must like to argue, but neither one of them will ever admit it. What's tonight's argument about? Lydia's trying to convince John that you're the reason there's so much tension. He's resisting. But her will is stronger. It's just a matter of time until she has him convinced that his life would be a whole lot easier without a big dribbling mongoloid in it. Look, we're not going to do this again, are we? Do what? Break up, wait a month, realize there's nobody better out there, and get back together again? Oh, come on. It wasn't even that big of a fight. That was just a discussion. 
I never could tell the difference between fights and discussions. I was always surprised as to which was which. Well, you could ask me which it is as we're going. Huh? So, uh, which is this? What we're doing right now? Yeah. This is foreplay. Did you think I'm retarded? Uh, just a second, Dennis. <laughs> it's okay. I'll see you later. What's going on? Do you think I'm a big, dribbling mongoloid? <laughs> Where do you get these ideas, Dennis? I don't think you're that big. Dribble, you do. Yeah, mongoloid you are, but big. Well, that's just wishful thinking, buddy. No, no I'm not a mongoloid. I was just kidding. Well, you should stop. I'm not retarded. I'm just slow. I didn't think you're that slow, buddy. No, I'm smarter than people think I am. I'm getting smarter and smarter all the time. I know you are. I'm not afraid to look at myself in the mirror anymore. Dreams, buddy? Yeah. Yeah. I borrow one of your ties. I don't really use them anyway. Okay. You can have it. I gotta talk to you. I, I need to know a dream is a story I tell myself, right? What do you mean, exactly? 
I tell myself a story. One part of my brain tells another part of my brain a story. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way of saying it, I guess. Well, if it's a story I tell me, how can I trick myself? <laughs> what do you mean? You can't tell yourself a joke and not see the punchline coming. What, do you, you, you think someone else is telling you these stories? I think that... that it has to be. Someone like... <laughs> not scared. You're scared of some of your own hamsters. We gotta do something about it. We gotta fix the scare. How can you make me not scared anymore? We have to stop the nightmares. How can we stop the nightmares? We have to fix our brain. We have to get better and become smart. There's a way to do it, but nobody tells you how. Why don't they just tell me how to get better? Because it's a test. They make up rules that are lies to see if you'll be dumb enough to believe them. So what do I do? Follow only the real rules. How do I do that? You gotta go kill a kitty cat. Why? It's what you're supposed to do. They say it's bad to kill kitty cats. But you like eating meat, right? So farmers can kill animals, right? See, that's the clue they gave you. They serve you meat. They're testing your gullibility when they say it's bad to kill animals. If you kill a cat, you can prove that you know which rules are fake. And they'll all know you're becoming smarter. You really think so? We have to be brave. We have to kill our neighbor's cat. The tabby. That kitty likes me. That'll make it easier to catch. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
doing very good work today. I did many kitties and many doggies. This, this taxidermy cassette, it's very important. Why? Gonna teach you what to do with the kitties and doggies you bring back. Grab a doggy from the cooler. You're holding the new paintbrush, Dennis. I didn't know you knew how to do anything involving woodwork. I'm um, getting better and better at it. <laughs> Can I see? Oh, well, not yet. Why not? Well, you get your private office. Why can't this be my private office? Why can't this be where my work stays just oh, for no, me? No, brother, I gotta see it. I'll show you all of it in a few days. Taxidermy. Forensic. Why do you have these tapes? Why do you want to know about butchery and leather care and taxidermy, and especially forensics? What is that smell? No, Dennis, I'm definitely coming in. No, no, those aren't my cassettes. They got in my bag by mistake. You know, Dennis, I might believe that if there was one cassette on one topic, maybe two, but not four. These didn't fall into someone's bag. Someone went shopping for these and placed them in a bag. <gasps> yes, but that someone wasn't me. So you picked up someone else's bag? Yeah, I got their books on tape and they got mine. Well, thank God, because this is, uh, <laughs> that's, that... excuse me, buddy. Hey, babe, come on in. Nah, uh, uh you come out. Come on, let's get something to eat. Uh, okay, hang on a second. Hey, uh, Dennis, you gonna be okay for a couple hours? I'm gonna go out with Lydia. Yeah, I'll be fine. Just before you picked me up, I had a nasty scare. What happened? I heard a hammer pounding down in the basement. So I went down to investigate. Couldn't be Dennis. Dennis doesn't know anything about carpentry. But it is Dennis. Suddenly looking a lot like a professional carpenter. Now, the fact that he's doing something skillfully is exciting, but it's also kind of scary. And what's he building? I don't know. You don't know? Well, it doesn't really matter. Even if it's an atrocity, it won't be an eyesore because it's down in the basement. Well, aren't you the slightest bit curious? Uh, I mean, what's he going to show you? He said he would show me in a couple of days. You know, you should have seen him with his tool belt and his protective goggles. What if he could become a carpenter and get a job? <laughs> Look at you. You're so proud of him. You'd make a great dad. Well, I want to be a dad. I want to be your husband. And I want to know what you call those turbine engine driven ceramic and titanium vehicles you've seen maybe once or twice in a lifetime. I never remember what they're called, but what do you call that? <sighs> Can't blame my fault for that. They're very fast. 
<laughs> what is this? I have no idea. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Those look a lot like the earrings that you saw in Aspen that you fell in love with that I couldn't afford. Now, this is wrapping up much too neatly to be a coincidence. Now, okay, what's wrong? Are they not the right earrings? Why did you set me up like that? Set you up like what? We were talking about marriage. Children. Earrings. But with spiders, the challenge is of a different nature. Spiders are not social animals. They have no families. If the spider's gene is to last into the next generation, he must approach the female by stealth, careful not to be seen by her, because spiders are cannibals and females are much larger than males. I would give you a ring today if you would live with Dennis. When I said I wanted a baby, I meant the small kind, the cute kind. Not the 30-year-old masturbating kind. The procreative act complete. The male spider must now escape her web before she catches and eats him. To her, the male is not a husband, not a mate, not even another spider. To the female, the male is merely food. Australia is home to the world's most venomous spiders. Notable amongst them is the funnel web. Unique not only for its deadly poison, but for its inexplicably aggressive behavior. It will, unprovoked, charge anyone it sees. Which raises the question, why? If it doesn't have a soul, it will bite you without a second thought, because it doesn't have a first. If it does have a soul, it will bite you because it doesn't like you, you fucking retard. It would need a soul to appreciate your disgust with its soullessness. Look at those eyes, those lifeless black spears. Would they be looking back? No. No, not these eyes. Those eyes. to be a child. Why? Because that's what we'll need to do to prove that we're not stupid. It's the next step in the test. Once you realize killing animals isn't bad, it soon gets clear that all killing isn't bad. To learn Killing animals is okay. They gave you, you meat as a clue. You don't know how many times your meat at dinner time was someone you knew. I ate kids at dinner many times. Everybody kills little boys and girls, and they're all disappointed in you because you haven't done it. Only a few hours until dawn. Go out and kill a kid.
Why? It's not helping me. I, I don't feel smarter. Nobody says I'm acting smarter. You did good work. Very good work. All we did was kill three kids. I'm just as dumb as I ever was. We did very well. And I have to tell you a secret now. This isn't helping me. I gotta tell you a secret. Be in close. This isn't helping me. When you're sleeping at night, I'm the one who whispers in your ear. Sorry about the stories I tell, but it's just a little darker over here. You need more sessions with me, right? Desperately. And you can't afford them, right? Not really, no. What if I give you my lunch time every day for a month? We wouldn't be in session. We'd be having lunch together as friends, so I wouldn't have to charge you. <laughs> that would be great. I do expect a fee, just not a cash fee. What do you want? You can't skirt issues by claiming they're not what you want to talk about. If I want to talk about the house and the car you can't afford, you must play along. Fair enough? So it's half therapy, half browbeat. More like 90% therapy you think you need and 10% therapy I think you need. That's fine. Well, we'll start with what you think your problems are. Who are you? I'm not just one. I've been called Legion. I am many. Where are you? I'm right here. The dark place. Where is the dark place? I'm not sure. I couldn't show you on a map. I do know this, though. No one here ever wanted to come. But you, oh, Dennis, you would love it here. If you came here, you'd be happy for the rest of your life. If I went there, I'd be happy for the rest of mine. So what do we do? Just keep doing what you're doing. It'll make you smarter. It'll make me able to go where you are. It's a good deal all the way around. Just keep doing what you're doing. What do you look like? You want to see me? Take this mirror and point it at the closet mirror. Now take a step back. Look down the hallway into infinity. Is, is that you? I didn't choose to look this way. Why should I help you anymore? You hurt me. Who's really hurting you? Me or Susan? Susan likes me. She wouldn't fuck you with someone else's pussy. Why? She wouldn't fuck a retard. How revolting. But a serial killer. How exciting, how intriguing, how mysterious. You know what makes you so unattractive in Susan's eyes? No. She thinks you couldn't hurt a fly. She thinks you're insignificant. If you killed her, she'd die screaming. She'd die in agony. But she'd die wet between the legs. Am I really your enemy? 
I'm your only friend. I'm hungry, Dennis. Let's go get some ice cream. the hand in the coat? You hiding a concealed weapon or something? <laughs> oh, no, it's a, no? a notebook I got here. I'm gonna write down notes in it and keep them. Can you read? Well, uh, uh no, but what I've kind of been doing is asking other people to write down the notes and then when I get home, I ask John to read them to me. That's the coolest thing I've ever heard. I was hoping you'd write me a note. I would love to, Dennis. Take a letter, Susan. Okay. To whomever it may concern, I, Susan Hilt, being of Sound mind and hot body. <laughs> and I'm prepared to make the following confessions. I think Dennis Peterson is super keen, and I would like to have his babies. I can't think of a way to get him to ask me out or tell him that my idea of a perfect date would include bumper cars and ice cream here in my own store. This is a joke, isn't it? Why? I would just feel more comfortable if you're kidding. I mean, you're not really asking me out, are you? Would it be so wrong if I did? Well, Dennis, I'm spoken for. No, you broke up with that guy two weeks ago. Yeah, I'm not I'm not ready to move on, Dennis. You can't just turn love off like a switch. You were only dating him for a month. Dennis, it, it wouldn't work out between us. <laughs>
Are you lying, John? <laughs> no. Are you sure? When you continue lying to someone whom you know knows you are lying, that's when it can be called compulsive. How do you know? Friendly word of advice, John. Steer clear of poker. It wouldn't be your game. Quite a tell, huh? Excuse me. Oh. Sorry. Lydia. Hi, John. You spying on me? No. No, I, uh, I just needed a ride. Well, I'm going home. That's okay. You want company? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Great. Thanks. What was our first date like? Feeling nostalgic? Sentimental? You want to do it again? See if we can recapture something? Is that it? What are we doing down here? Dennis spends a lot of his spare time down here these days. Oh, right. Carpentry. The carpentry. Hey, Dennis. Come here, buddy. Got a surprise for you. What surprise? You know I love surprise. Well, come on out. Come on out, and I'll tell you all about it. Tonight, you're in charge. Whatever you want to do, we'll do. All three of us. Let's go to the car. Chop, chop. Dennis! The girls are over here. The girls are over there. The love is in the air. The other girls are bare. Thank you. Walking in the field. Flower in the air. Looking for a fling. Then the millionaire. We are all good angels. How do they make the things move? Like the octopus. How do they make all those eight big tentacles of the octopus move like that? Well, it's animatronics, Dennis. Very simple ones. See the wires attached to the tentacles? Well, they go up past the curtain where we can't see them into a big plastic tube with a bunch of discs on it. It's not too unlike the giant shish kebab skewer who rule old vinyl records. But it doesn't actually go through the center. It's a little off center, so when it rotates, the disc goes up and down. And subsequently, the arms attached to that disc go up and down as well, moving the cables, which move the tentacles. I didn't understand any of that. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, what will it be? A uh, large pepperoni pizza and a pitcher of diet. And the strawberry milkshake. OK, I'll be back in a flash. Um. I'm gonna go to the bathroom. She smiles when I look in her eyes. I see the sunrise. We are all going to the He is really well behaved this evening.
You didn't talk me into that one. I just did it, and I don't know why. I knew you'd come around eventually. What happened? You've developed immunities, so you're upping your dosage. Why? You're addicted. Stop killing and sobriety's icy hand will have you. Hell, you can't even decrease your kills. But any increase, and you overdose. So what do I do? You graduate to stronger shit. You have to kill those close to you now. Friends, family. You have to kill more people like Susan. I think you're tricking me. I think you had this planned all along. You say everyone else is tricking me, but it's you. I know that now, so you can't trick me anymore. You're still gonna have to do everything I say because I control your dreams. I can handle the nightmares. You haven't yet had a nightmare. I won't do it. You're getting real close. I can smell your soul getting ripe. I won't do it. Oh, you'll do it, retard. Or I'll find another retard, and he'll do it to you. <gasps> You got me really good. <laughs> Car, hit me right here first. And then up here. You can't even really see a bruise, can you? <laughs> My skin held up pretty well. Even after the bus sent me through the windshield. You think I'd be cut, but I'm not. My skin is <laughs> good. There's not a mark anywhere on it. And most of my bones aren't broken either. You know that saying a chain is only as strong as its weakest link? Well, you can see that my skin isn't the weakest link. My bones aren't either. What is? Absolutely everything else. You can see now, Dennis, that my skin is the only thing that's holding me together. <laughs> Hey, you not off there, buddy? Well, I guess you've had enough fun for one night. Come on, take you home. You can't hurt me if I don't fall asleep. You know what happens if you stay awake too long? I don't care. You reach a state of semi-consciousness, unable to discern asleep from awake. You know what happens if you stay in the dark place long enough? You get really ugly. You ain't seen nothing yet. <gasps> How can you stay awake all night? 
You won't last an hour. Nighty night. This just in. Sleep. Let yourself sleep. Sleep. If that's the boy theory of the end of the rest of the Sleep. I just woke up. Glad to hear you got some sleep. Ooh, you are ripe. I need a bath. Let's go run one. I uh, know. I get to call the shots today, and I say no oh, bath. Yes, that was yesterday. Run a bath. Today, chop chop. Wake up, honey, we overslept. Mm. What are you talking about? You went to check on Dennis five minutes ago. <sighs> no, I didn't. You didn't? No. You didn't tell him to take a bath? No. <sighs> I swear, I must have dreamt it. I got the morning afters. Yeah. Morning after crack and gasoline. What the hell did we drink last night? We didn't. We didn't drink anything last night. Let's get some coffee at the ice cream place. Susan, do you still have... That's not Susan, honey. Sorry, ma'am. I'm just so used to seeing Susan here. You look so much like her. Yeah, people have made that mistake tons of times before. You'll be seeing me here from now on. Where is Susan? I'm sorry, you haven't heard? No. She had an accident. What kind of accident? A traffic accident, kind of. She got hit by a car. Oh, my God. Well, how is she doing? She's dead. Oh, honey, here she comes. Good. Ma'am. Miss? Ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am. It was, wow. sir. Sir, could you send her? Thank you. What'd you like? Ah, uh, uh, I want a drink. You? Definitely. A vodka soda, splash of pineapple, please. And I will have a Jack Neat. And, uh, what happened to the usual waitress? What was her name, Jenny? I'm filling in for her. She's sick or something. Hostess, valet, waitress. It's beginning to seem like an epidemic. No kidding. Ah, I totally forgot my appointment with Dr. Preston. At least I'll see one familiar face today. Excuse me, Dr. Preston. I am, uh, I'm sorry. Thanks fucking Christ for that. Yeah. I'm in the mood to vent. And you called me at a hell of a time. Oh. Go ahead. Ask me the question. Ask me what everyone I... fucking asks me. Every fucking minute of every fucking day. Why do you look like that? What's wrong with you? You want to know what's wrong with me? <sighs> Nothing. I'm just dandy. Until, of course, some asshole like you comes along and ruins my damn good time. Terribly sorry. Sir. I need a break. After. 
after we get Mildy. Who? You'll remember when we see her. But I don't know. She's a bitter social reject who can never feel good about herself. So to even the playing field, she makes everyone feel bad. No! What if I say, no, I won't kill Mildy? I won't kill anyone again. She's coming for you now. She's coming with the police. Good. Go too long without killing and the nightmares start, Dennis. I can fix that. How do you like the dark place, Dennis? You said I'd be happy for the rest of my life. Well, you're not alive anymore, Dennis. I am. So we're all clear, right? John Peterson, Mildy Torres, Social Services. With a court order relieving you of your custodial responsibilities to Dennis Peterson. Looks like nobody's home. Yeah, we don't have a search warrant, so... So stick to what's in plain sight. All right. You smell that? Retard stank. No, it smells good. Wait a minute. We're alone here, right? Yeah, turkeys, chicken, roast beef. It all takes a day. All right, so I'm going up here. Mm -hmm. You're going to take the kitchen. <laughs> Just save me a piece, all right, Don? Yeah, right. I'm serious. Did you hear that? You better fucking save me a piece.
recognize a soul. It's worse than that. We haven't recognized anyone all day. Where is everyone? I don't know. Must be the flu or something. Well, why would it only target our friends? Okay, so what's your guess? Well, Dennis is holed up in the basement with instructions for butchers and taxidermists. It smells like Satan's ass down there. Our people are missing. One's dead for sure. Not everyone we know is missing, okay? <laughs> ha! There's Pete! Pete from the bookstore! Hey! Pete! 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 Uh, hi, John, Lydia. What, what, uh, what's going on? Oh, you're a little bit excited, and it's creeping me out, man. It's just it's just really good to see you. Yeah, super to see you guys. No, no, you don't understand, man. You're the first familiar face that we've seen all day. It's it's just really Twilight Zone-ish. OK. Uh, oh, John, I, I've got Dennis's books on tape here. Um, yeah, this is definitely Dennis's. I got Chuck's marked down there with a different color. Have Chuck's and Dennis's books been getting mixed up? Yeah. <laughs> thank God. Yes, thank God. Parting of the Red Sea was OK, but I was not a believer until I witnessed the bookstore fuck up. Uh, have you have you seen any of Chuck's cassettes? Yeah. Because I was a bit worried they may be Dennis's. OK. And yeah, I got you. been spending a lot of time in the basement. There's weird smells coming out of there. And stinking in the basement is OK if you're reading the right books. Exactly. Well, there you have it. What? Well, Dennis didn't even buy the books. Chuck did. Your point? <sighs> the theory about Dennis no longer has a leg to stand on. Well, then why do you lie about him so much? What are you hiding? <laughs> what? Why are you lying? I'm not lying. We both know you're lying. You really want to know? Dennis was a prodigy. His IQ was not traditionally measurable. He taught himself arithmetic through long division at age five, through library books. He was a hero in the papers, and he's still a hero to Dr. Preston, who keeps display case of newspaper clippings, essays, novellas, theories, all about or by Dennis. What happened? I don't remember all of it. I was eight when he was six, and uh, we got into a fight. And I punched him. Good punch, knockout punch, right to the jaw. And he went tumbling down the stairs. He's only unconscious for about an hour. But uh, when he came to, he couldn't read. He couldn't even tie his own shoelaces. Cars, I don't know. I don't even know what the fight was about. You did this to him? He was a genius. I'd love to get away with you. Start a family, have a normal life. But I really do. I owe every cent that I make and every moment of my life to Dennis. We're going to have to talk to Dennis. About what? I'll need to know how things are going to change. What's going to change? For one, that house is going to be a little more cramped with me living in it. You could live with Dennis. Well, it's not a dream come true. But it is a family. And that's more than I ever had. Wait, wait, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, where are, you, where are you going? I'm gonna go get Dennis. Get the birthday table at Monsoon's. He's gonna have a lot to digest. A lot of uh, complicated grown-up issues. And pizza to digest.
So, how about them Dodgers? I... I'm sorry, Pete. I'm sorry, everyone. I seem to have been a spectacle. No, no. Dude, none of us even noticed. Uh, let me just put Dennis's books there on the edge of your table. You look a bit glazy, man. Yeah, I feel a bit weird. Do you take anything, Matt? Just prescriptions. Well, let's not jump to conclusions and blame the drugs. Anybody would freak when they found out what Dennis has been reading about. Well, I haven't yet found out what Dennis has been reading about. I know what Chuck's been reading. Oh, yeah. Now, you know, that's creepy. Why, what, is, what, what has Dennis been reading? Well, books on forensics and taxidermy. That's, that's Chuck. No, that's Dennis. Yeah, it's an acquired taste. Don't worry about that smell in your basement. It's dead animal. Taxi! Pete, you gotta call the cops. I don't want to. Send them to my house. There's a crime in progress. Here's the knife, Alakazam, gone. Boom. Tight.
Dennis? Good evening. Lydia? Say hello to John. Hello, John. <laughs> Lydia, you seem a little sad. Is something wrong? Yes. I feel all empty inside. I'm a shell of my former self. <laughs> Why are you feeling that way? I've demanded so much of my brother's time that he no longer has a life. I can't care for myself, so duty binds him to me. And you feel guilty because of that? I took all the time he could have focused on his own needs and demanded he focus on my needs. I took his life away. <laughs> oh, it can't be that bad. What could be worse? You could remove any hope of his having a normal life. How? Well, you could push him down the stairs and damage his brain, render him mentally incompetent. What kind of a monster would do that to his own family? A spider. What do spiders do? They kill all their family members. That's not as bad as what I did. And what you did isn't as bad as damaging someone's brain. Oh? Why not? When you damage someone's brain, you darken their whole world. Dennis, Dennis, what are you doing? Nothing remains familiar. Family loses familiarity. Dennis, get me out of the chair. Imagine that. Imagine what? How it must feel to wander about a town once familiar, only to meet fifth-generation copies of people you once knew. How could someone in that position cope? You'd have to think like a spider. Dennis, 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 Dennis everything is going to be fine. A spider's so cold and deceptive. Dennis, 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 let me out of the chair. Dennis, God damn it, let me out of the chair right now. Everyone is. Dennis, listen to me. God damn it, Dennis, let me out of the chair. Let me tell you a story about a worse deception still. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. And I pray the Lord forgive me, but he cannot stay. He takes attention I need for my mommy away. He reminds me all the time that I'm not him. Forgive me, oh Lord, but I'm about to sin. These injuries could not have happened in the fall. Aha! The jealous older brother. He's the victim of an attack. I'll revive him. He'll talk. Talk to me, boy. Beautiful, beautiful boy. God damn it, Dennis! Foiled! Get me out of no, this chair. not foiled. Just a setback. We'll bring you back, and your brother will get his comeuppance. <laughs> everyone is deceiving everyone. We're not social animals. It's a rogue world. A spider world, the itsy bitsy spider called up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out.
the doctors tell me if I received orders to kill from the person who made up my dreams and the person I saw in the mirror, then I ordered myself to kill. I am simply insane. None of this is real, but that isn't true. I'm not in this hospital. This isn't me. I'm in this hospital. This is me. All I do now is hope. Hope that the cheap electric car will come crashing through the doors. I'll be safely back at the carnival, and the scariest haunted house in the world will finally come to an end.